Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back here today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to check out Patchwork Express from Lookout Games. This is for two players, ages 6 plus. It'll take about 10 to 15 minutes to play. And in Patchwork Express, you are going to be building yourself a little quilt. You're going to be collecting patches, getting buttons, buying more patches, and trying to get the most points at the end of the game by acquiring currency and building your quilt as big as you can. It's a very light simple game they took the original patchwork and made it a family slash dare i say it children's game where kids could play this by themselves let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think about it all right then we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of patchwork express so first and foremost we have a handy dandy rule booklet three pages double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples very well done should have you up and running in no time at all big thumbs up on the rule booklet so in patchwork express you are going to be going around the circle aka this little board right here picking up these patches putting them onto your board in the hopes of having the most points at the end of the game you're going to get points by collecting these buttons which are also the currency in the game and by having your board Board filled up as much as you can with the different patches that you see around the outside. So let's go over the components, we'll get in the gameplay, and I'll quickly show you how the game works. So first we have our main little board right here, which is where you're going to be moving your piece. Each person's going to have their own different colored piece, and I'll explain how the movement works a little bit later, but it is very simple. Around the outside, you're going to randomly scatter a whole bunch of these patches. The only ones you're not going to put out are the ones that have the blue and green numbers on them. You'll see these ones have red and yellow, you're going to save the blue and green ones to the side. You'll use those later on in the game. Next, you're going to find where the three-piece patch is. You're going to place the little pawn right in front of that, and then you are ready to go after everyone has five dollars. So we got five bucks. Let's start up the game. So we'll just pretend green is going to go first, which actually they would because they're on top. And here are the two choices that you have. Every single turn, you're going to make one of two choices. You are either going to A, move yourself one space in front of your opponent, which in this case, I would just go boom, one, and get one button for each space you move. So let's just say, for instance, that uh, yellow would have been right there. I could go one, two, three, four, and I would collect four buttons aka four dollars which i can spend later on so you can do that move the other move you can do is you can look at the three pieces of patch that are right in front of the pawn right there and you can take one of those and then place it onto your board so let's just say i'm going to take this one right here so i'll just boom put it right there it's the first thing i'm going to do take this i'm going to pay three buttons so boom three buttons back into the bank then I'm going to place this onto my board. Once you place it onto your board, it is locked in place for the rest of the game. So I might put it right there. And then it says three time on it, which means I'm going to go up one, two, three on the time track because this is what that is. Now it's the next player's turn. They once again have a choice. They can take one of these three right here or they could just go one, two, three, four and take four buttons. So let's just say they took uh, this one right here. It looks pretty good. It's only going to cost them one button. Move them up two spaces. They put that on their board and they go up two time spaces. Now, this is not a typical game where you're going to take turns. In actuality, in this game, you're always going to look for who is in the back of this line right here, then they will go. So the yellow person is actually going to take another turn. So let's just say they might go right here and take this piece as well. They're going to pay one button. They're going to move forward th three spaces and go one, two, three. Now, you'll notice that there's buttons spread around the board. Now, these are special buttons because if you pass or when you pass those buttons, you are going to collect money. You're going to collect as much money as buttons you have on your board. So let's pretend that this was on my board right here. So let's just say, you know, this is what I have going on right now. And if I pass one of those buttons, I would get one, two, three, four bucks. Uh, once again, if I took the move to go forward past the yellow, I could go one, two, three. So I would get three bucks plus four bucks, I'd be getting a whopping seven dollars right there. Last thing I need to mention about the game are these little patches right here. The first person to pass these patches is going to pick it up and you're going to immediately place it onto your board. And these can go into those tiny little spots that you might not be able to fill otherwise. You can almost plan for picking up those patches as well. The game will end when both people have finally gotten to the Z right here, at which point you're going to look at your board. You're going to get a point for every dollar you have and then you're going to 
to lose two points for every spot on your grid that you have not filled. So if this was what I ended up with, which would be absolutely terrible, I would pretty much be guaranteed to lose the game. It doesn't matter how much money I'd have because I'd lose two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, uh, fourteen. 28. Uh, 40, I'd be losing tons and tons and tons of points. So you want to both fill in your board while at the same time acquiring currency. Whoever has the most will be the winner of Patchwork Express. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Patchwork Express from Lookout Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Two players, er, very restricted player count. Also, this is a very light, simple, fluffy, quick game, which is going to be a turn off to some people, I think. I think a lot of people are going to come to this and they're going to expect, you know, like Seven Wonders Duel, what Seven Wonders Duel was to Seven Wonders, which was just a two player version of the game that maintains a lot of the same aspects of seven wonders but is still you know at about the same level this however definitely knocks it down a level this is much more light it's much more simple family friendly child friendly i taught this to my five-year-old so you need to go into the game knowing that another comment i have in this game is that you really don't have that many choices from turn to turn to turn to turn and in that aspect the game can get repetitive now it didn't bug me that much because it's such a quick game but on your turn you're going to be able to choose from three different patches or you are going to go forward and collect buttons. I mean, that's that's literally the only choice you're going to make all game. And most of the time, your choices are relatively simple. Um, any other cons that I have with the game? I mean, you have to know it's light. You have to know just you, you have to know that this is the kind of thing that I played with my five year old, and I believe my five year old could teach it to other kids around his age. I mean, that's how simple this game is. You have to know that going into it, and the two players. I think those are the biggest cons that I have with the game. Moving on to the pros, I think Patchwork Express is a good game. I want to start off by saying that. I think it's a good game, and as a gamer, I enjoyed myself with this game. I played it with some other adults. I played it with two other adults, and they enjoyed themselves with this game. They weren't crazy about it. They weren't nuts about it. But these adults were pretty deep into the hobby. You know, we play a lot of other uh, meatier games than this game. But we all thought it was good. Now, where this game really shined was when I was able to play it with the kids in my class and play it with my son. Those kids went nuts for this game. And for that aspect, I have to bump this from a good game to a great game. Because I played this with 11-year-olds, I played this with a 5-year-old, I played this with an 8-year-old, I played this with a 7-year-old. All of them understood it, picked it up just like that, and really enjoyed the game. And it's the kind of game where most of the time their choices are going to be simple enough that they can figure out good choices and i'm not just going to crush them each and every time now i won most of the games i played in my classroom but i did lose once and i think maybe twice when i was playing this in my classroom so that's always something i like to mention with family and children's games so is this one of those games where you're going to have to you know wear kids glove in order to give kids a shot to win and to that answer i would say yes but not completely which is a good thing so really this is a family weight game maybe you got you got a kid who really likes uh, the hobby games wants to get into them yes absolutely uh if you have kids age five six seven i think this is a fantastic game to pick up i can tell you right now i'm going to be keeping this game because my five-year-old really did enjoy the game you know the theme is somewhat boring that's another con and the theme is not you know especially if you're talking to younger kids i mean oh we're making a blanket they're like oh what's a patch and i'm like okay yeah just just collect these pieces and try to fill them the square so the theme definitely could have been stronger uh which is another con i forgot to mention but gameplay wise easy to learn easy to teach good components nice box size you know the rules are very well done and i like it i, I thought it was a good game but the kids if you're looking at this as a kids game i think it's a great game also i think if you're getting if you're new into the hobby and you're looking for some two player sort of games like your uh like a lost cities or something like that if you're building a two-player collection for you and your spouse or for you and your kid or something like that and you're both trying to get to the hobby i think this would be a great addition as well as long as you don't go into this expecting it to be you know patchwork but just for two players like a, a still somewhat deep game but only for two players i think you're really gonna enjoy patchwork express from lookout games you gotta know what it is going into it but if you do i can definitely recommend it if you enjoyed this review please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know what is the most crafty thing or quilty thing or sewy thing you've ever done in your life for me personally it was seventh grade uh, it was 6th or 7th grade. It was when uh, bu 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 that Nelly song was really popular. But that's, that really is not very many details because he had so many awesome songs. Um, anywho, complete tangent. 
it was home economics. I think it was second, seventh grade, and I made a pair of boxer shorts that actually turned out pretty well until the elastic got stretched out and then they were god awful. But I still refused to throw them away and I still wore them and I would put just like uh, little clips in there so they would, I could still wear them because I was just so proud of this pair of boxer shorts that I made in seventh grade. But let me know in the comments below. What is the craftiest, thriftiest thing you've ever made? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.